more of a sort of presentation as to some things that have informed my practice as well. And also when I show you some of the work, I'm going to read out a few notes, more like creative writing. And I also wanted to draw attention to the word performance, because Gail and Kirsten came up with this title, Contingency, Risk and Strange Performance of Ink and Paper and Drawing. And, um, you know, the, com the components of performance are the body and space and time. Uh, this, I've, I've put this quote in because I was, I've just come from Brazil where I was working in the north in a museum dedicated to climate change in the region. I met this really wonderful curator in the 70s and she gave me this book on the spiritual aspects of archery as a doctrine. And, um, and the book highlights the traditions of these. But this, this, there's, there's such a synergy with, with this and my practice as an artist because it's about the experience. Um, and actually, uh, this is, this is an, an introduction um, and he's a, a translator of, of, of Sanskrit and um, Chinese and Japanese as well. Um, but the book itself uh, is, a, is a, a German philosopher who was living in Tokyo and he um, practiced with a Zen master and it's really all about um, the uh, experience of nature and he talks about the history of time and how that informs everything we do. So uh, this is a piece of work I made in Brazil. It's actually called Temporality and my task there was to respond to the landscape and my work is kind of, uh, I'm interested in origins and um, identity and memory really. So this is kind of, uh, all the work is very into traces of human history really. This is on this piece, it's part of a series called Irrespective of Time. This piece was actually made for the publication. Um, so note one. Uncertainty is a place, a corner of the world where thought is not yet known. It manifests as carbon black, or as running water, or a continuous line. There is no beginning or end. Like the mountain climber, there is a miscomprehension of space and time, and the page becomes a vast nonlinear landscape. Doubt, uncertainty are in some ways passions for the artist, a route to truth only understood by those in commune with their materials. The unknown, a luminosity emerges that can only be described as somewhere between the earth bed and the stars. Um, I, I'm also inter uh, interested in a kind of this idea of a non-linear space, but also the body as a vehicle for memory. Um, and this is a kind of multi-layered painting made in three stages. To risk oneself, I just wanted to raise this question for you know artists and, and writers. For me, uh, there's always a risk with making work. A little, you know, we were talking earlier about not having a fixed viewpoint, and this idea of staying open to one's medium uh, means you're always risking yourself, and you can lose yourself to the process, and that can be extremely painful. And actually. Um, uh, Stephen was talking earlier about letting go of, letting, letting something out, and, and I think, you know, for artists, there's, there's a sense that when you make a piece of work and then you let it out, whether it's into the public domain or whether it's finishing it, that something happens and you need to recontain yourself somehow. Um, this is called Indra. Uh, Indra means possessing drops of rain. So this is note two. A twofold landscape of obsequious paths into memory. A juxtaposition of the mind and materials as the ink lays bare on the page. The force of bone black fractured by a luminous or broken light. A crack in the infrastructure of a kind of deep time field. This elegy to life and to nature. The body through exploration of or suggestion of meaning what the historian Simon Sharma refers to as the happenstance of illumination. Uh, 
Uh, this is another piece recently made in Brazil. It's a kind of imprint. It's made blindly, so uh, you know, sort of non-seeing. It's made through uh, the paper being um, turned upside down on a plate, and then I, I look and return and look and return, and and it's sort of made through pressing the body as well. Um, so in a, a kind of um, quite organic images and and references to animal life as well. So this is note three. The ancients volcanic rock and fissures that open a, a human dialogue through their ruggedness and appearance of masters or myths or fragmentation of light and opening in the two dynamic in the two dimensional space of the page. What is here? A time circle of memory created by the hand itself. There's a place I seek in the work, the history of origins and time. Other worlds projected from the psyche before birth itself. The carrying of meaning layers of our own histories and flesh, an ethereal landscape and conference of marks and solitude. Um, uh, this, I just put these lines in. These are by Plato because I recently did a project which was focused on his work, and I'm very interested in. Uh, particularly languages are not made but grow, and this idea of hidden laws that he talks about. And, and, and the notion of, you know, through making or connecting with the medium in our lifetimes, we're expanding our sensory imaginations. Um, and he talks a great deal about that. Um, and then I thought I'd just finish with this, which is, again, saying the same thing about, you know, we cannot really uh, open ourselves or find what we're looking for if we're holding on to some kind of result or, or fixed thing. And uh, actually, Joseph Conrad talks about um, this as well. He talks about the right offing, which is what sailors saw beyond the ship's horizon. Um, and, um, and it's the place that kept them going, really, because they could see beyond. And um, I just came across this in my notebook a few days ago, so I just found it. Um, yeah. Thank you.